happy Saturday. Super excited to host Saturday's live Live and Share podcast interview. Thank you so much for watching. And those of you that are catching the replay, do me a favor, type replay so that I know that you caught up later on. I'm super excited for today's interview. We'll be talking about leadership and faith. And the interviewee that we have today is SPC President Dr. Tanja Williams. So hit the share button, let people know that they can join in on this broadcast. We're going to really be going in about obviously today's climate, what's happening in today's world, but we'll also hear about Dr. Williams' story and how she's been so resilient to where she is today. So as soon as she hops on, we'll get on and get started. Good morning for you that are hopping on. Super excited to have this conversation. Live and Share podcast is a platform to talk about leadership and faith. I interview so many successful people and the secret sauce about their success is their faith. So today we'll be having a conversation with SBC president. Dr. Tanja Williams, she'll be sharing her story, be giving tips about leadership and also providing some strategy about today's climate and how do we bridge the racial gap. So I cannot wait to have her come on. It'll be on, she'll be on very shortly. I'm going to go ahead and bring her on camera. That are you that are hopping on, share the video, let people know on this beautiful rainy Saturday that they can join into an awesome conversation about faith and leadership. And we have our special guest with us today, Dr. Tanja Williams. Y'all do us a favor, share the video so people can join in on this amazing conversation. So let's get started. So today's interviewee is the president of St. Petersburg College, Dr. Tanja Williams. Dr. Williams is actually the first female president and African-American president of St. Petersburg College. And St. Pete College is actually the oldest um, community college institution, institution in the state of Florida. So talk about trailblazing a new path. So to kick off today's conversation, Dr. Williams, I would love for you to start talking about you being a native of St. Petersburg. Well, good morning, everyone, and I am so glad to join you this morning. I'm excited that you took the time to get up with Marilyn and myself to talk about life. So yeah. being a native of St. Petersburg, Florida, I've been here 57 years, started in humble beginnings um, in uh, the Midtown area, formerly known as the Deuces, and um, was raised by my mom and partially my grandmother. Um, St. Peter's come a long, long way since I was born and we have a long way to go. But I have learned so much from so many people over the years who have stood in the gap on my behalf to help me move from poverty to prosperity. Um, and prosperity is not in money, it's in living, it's in life, right. it's in love, it's in having opportunities and access. Absolutely. So you are the first one in your family to go to college. Talk to us about your experience having to be the person to, you know, trailblaze a new path for your family. Thank you so much. You know, I came from very strong stock. Um, many of my people did not have education, including my mom. She had a high school diploma from Gibbs High and um, she had dreams for her kids. She did not grow up thinking about her circumstances, but focus more on the future and possibilities and opportunities. Being the first is very tough. Um, for those of you who are the first, you know that um, you set the example, you set the pace. And my mom, having not been to college, did not know how to help me. And so I had to figure that out, but I also had to be willing to accept help. And so I had a lot of people along the way who stood in her stead and helped me out, filling out financial aid applications, um, understanding how to go to school, how to study, what to do, making friends. I um, started at a Christian college, and I believe I may have been the first African-American there. I'm not 100% sure. There were Bahamians and other um, 
uh, people of color, but I think I may have been, but I, I just had not lived in that environment or community before. And so I had to learn. And that's the thing about being a trailblazer. You have to be willing to sit back and learn so that you can blaze the trail. You're not going to start knowing everything. And so right. I had individuals who did not know me who wanted to help. And I had to be willing to receive the help. You know, what happens to a lot of people who are determined, we become determined to do things by ourselves. And that never works. Trust no. me, you haven't been there. You don't know how to do it. And so right. I had to be willing to listen and learn. But you know what, Marilyn? It was hard because my grandmother would say, string bean, you need to make it happen. I can't help you, but you better do it. And, yeah. and so that's the thing about this kind of living and, and wanting more is you may not have all the help you need, but you have the support and people behind you saying, we're here. We can't help you, but we're going to pray for you. We're going to root for you, but you've got to make it happen. Um, I think listening and being willing to learn and accept that I didn't know it all was were probably the best tenets for me to practice. Awesome. And I love the fact in your story how you mentioned there were so many other people that pushed you outside of your comfort zone to go and blaze a trail for so many other people. And I want you to talk about what was it like when you were met with opposition? What are some things that you had to do to overcome not only being the first in your family to go to college, but now your career at St. Pete College? Wow, that's a loaded question, Marilyn. Um, <laughs> you know, I think being honest about your weaknesses is the best thing you could ever do in your life. Mm. Understanding what you don't know and what you're not good at and being willing to work at it, to, to right. make it happen, to not sit back. You know, one of my faculty, uh, Jeff Briggs, he mentioned a year ago, courage over comfort to, mm. To move forward, you've got to be willing to be uncomfortable and be willing to live uncomfortably um, or live in that space for a while. It may take right. you a minute to get to where you're trying to go and things may feel chaotic. They may feel like they're not in place. But because I have strong faith in God, he aligns those things for me. They may seem right. like they're all over the place. They may just feel like, man, I don't know what I'm doing here. But the, you know, the Lord will align those things that seem so squirrely and crazy start coming together and you're able to see the vision and move forward. I don't know how people live without God. I don't know how they live without faith. Um, you know, but right. many people, I guess they have. Um, for me, um, in my house, that's the way we live and, and that's who we believe in. I think the, the other piece to the, the passion behind the purpose and being willing to grind for um, what you want is to overcome fear of failure. Um, I, I fail every day. Every day mm -hmm. I don't do something right. And um, I have that temperament of trying to be perfect. And it's just the worst temperament to have because you'll never, you'll never achieve that. Um, right. But being okay failing. And um, I call it failing forward. You fail and you move forward. Um, life is not going to be perfect. It's not going to uh, be peaches and cream all the time. But we become stronger as we overcome those obstacles, as we overcome those fears, and not let right. fear paralyze us and keep us from moving forward. Absolutely. When you first started at St. Pete College, you were a financial aid clerk. And over the tenure of you being there, plenty, 30 plus years at the college, you've had people to stand in the gap for you. But what's so mm -hmm. amazing is you were able to do the same for other people and to help them see beyond their limitations. So right now, I want you to talk about your career at SPC and the things that you had to overcome, but not just that, the wisdom that you received that helped you to overcome those areas. Okay, thank you. I, I did, I started as a senior financial aid accounting clerk and my main job was to go to the typewriter, many of you don't know what that is, and type out the checks for financial aid, put them in order and people will come to the business office and pick up their check. Um, 
it, it was a job that was probably the best job I've ever had because it started my trajectory and growth. Um, and it was the first job that I had that I had health insurance. Um, hardly no one in my family had that at the time. And so it was very important um, for me. But that was, um, if you've ever worked in financial aid, it's a tough job because you're dealing with people's money and everybody's um, hyper. And so coming from where I came from, um, I would tend to have an attitude. I um, would uh, probably not be my pro be professional. <laughs> um, and, and I was learning. I had a bachelor's degree, but, you know, um, sometimes we can think we know too much or um, not fit in. You know, when you're starting your career, you've got to find a way to fit in. Right. And it doesn't mean sell your soul, but it does mean you've got to learn the culture and understand, you know, what's going on. No one's going to change for you at that job. You're going to have to right. change to fit in that job. And so there were people like Myrtle Williams, um, Willie Felton, John Cromer, um, and several people there that talked with me. They pulled me aside, corrected me. Um, I received a lot of uh, constructive criticism. And again, that's a part of listening. You know, right. uh, a couple of times I blew it. Um, my first six months, I was put back on probation at St. Petersburg College uh, because of my attitude <sighs> and my mouth. Um, and uh, that, that uh, is an area I had to work hard on. And so to achieve your dreams, you have to be willing to change, to transform, to grow. Um, doesn't mean give up who you are, but bring your best self to the table. And at points um, through my career, especially early on, I did not bring my best self um, to the table. Once I caught on to the culture of the institution um, and learned how to listen, then I was able to move throughout the organization in various roles. But what's really important to me as a leader, and those who know me will find it to be true, um, my job is to serve. Um, leadership is not about pointing to things and telling people everything to do and, and being the head honcho. It's really about building new leaders um, right. and helping them lead um, and not um, all about me. I'm really a behind the scenes kind of girl. And, and I like that because when I see others get a chance to grow and move forward, it means a lot to me. And I've had a chance to do that and will continue um, to do that. I love that. You know, leadership is more than just giving orders and telling people where to go, how to get there, but to help them realize the potential that's on the inside of them and for them to think outside of the box and to go forth and be able to be successful in whatever role that they're in. And I want you to talk about your vision for St. Petersburg College. When you first became president, you were very clear about mm -hmm. the vision that you had for the college and how you wanted it to look inside of the community. Talk about that. Thank some. you so much. You know, one of the things, um, when you work at an organization for a long time, your view is different than someone coming in from the outside. And so my um, first thing, first piece of business was to talk about creating a community of care. And I believe that, um, an organization that lives in a culture that cares about them and their lives, their families and growth is a thriving culture. It's a thriving organization. And so we talk about the community of care has four C's. Culture, that's the way we live, work and play. Communication, that's the way we talk to each other and share information. Um, collaboration, working in tandem with each other and not against each other, collaborating, right. coming together, and then creativity. We just can't get stale and we can't keep doing the things that we've been doing. We have to do things differently. And I try to use that for my own life, that am I building a good culture um, for our organization? Am I modeling what we're looking for? Am I doing that? You know, but what has changed a little bit, especially since COVID and um, the racial disturbances and the murder of uh, Floyd, uh, George Floyd, is we've got to take the community of care to another level. It has to be even more of that. When we talk about equity and equality 
and making yeah. sure people have what they need to be successful. Um, I think that that changes the whole system. And when you add COVID and online learning and using technology more, that also impacts, um, to me, the um, achievement gap. Um, it widens. Um, right. More minorities and underserved populations don't have access to Wi-Fi and technology. Um, and, and so these are some things that we're going to have to re-envision, re-imagine St. Petersburg College. And so we're working on two phases right now. The first phase we've completed, and that was the recovery. That was how do we keep the engine roaring, even though all these things are happening? And the college responded in a miraculous way. I, I could never be more proud of our institution, our faculty, staff, and administrators, our students, the resilience, the hard work they put in to make sure that they were able to move forward. Um, I bragged yesterday that we graduated 2,300 students in spite of COVID. Um, right. Our faculty kept students learning and our students kept grinding. This second phase is like, how do we recover and, re and return? Like, what, what is this going to look like? And then when you add the racial disturbances to that, that changes that whole vision. And so right. we're looking at all those pieces to find ways to make sure that our African-American men, faculty, staff, so, um, administrators, and students are well-received and are supported to make sure that they know this is a safe zone. SPC is here to help, not harm. And we want right. to make sure that you have what you need to achieve your dreams. And Marilyn, you know me. I believe that education is the key. Absolutely. doesn't matter what type. I mean, you could do certifications. You, you could do degrees. But do something. Because right. then you have a skill set that's going to help you move forward in life and achieve what you're there to achieve. You know, back in the day, many of us couldn't get an education. Now all of mm -hmm. us can get one, but we're not trying. So, so we need to look at those opportunities um, where we can fit in and do what we want to do in society. And I'm always telling people, look, you may not get to pick the skin you're in, but you can pick who you become. Absolutely. You can choose your occupation. You really can. Even if people tell you no. Um, as a graduate of Bogus Ega High School, I was told I would be a great secretary. And that's what I was told. You're going to be a great secretary. You, you learn shorthand. You know how to type. You, but that wasn't what God had for me. And it sure wasn't what I had. Um, <laughs> I, I knew I wanted a different life. And so we, we have to grind and we have to move forward. Um, but but I, I do think that SPC's next step is reimagining a new college, a new way of doing business and a new way for students to learn. And it may not be 16 weeks, you know, right. for a semester. It may be competency based. Um, it may not be all all the time on campus. It may be a mixture. So we're going to have to really listen to our students to find out what it is they're going to need as the state and the federal government continues to make different changes. And so SPC needs to be the community's college um, that we serve everyone in the community. Um, while our name is St. Petersburg and I love St. Petersburg, um, we are St. Petersburg College, but we're the community's college, Tarpon Springs, Seminole, Pinellas Park, East Lake, Clearwater, everywhere. Um, so right. we just need to be uh, relevant and we need to be out there and we need to be flexible to make sure Absolutely. that we're serving our students. Absolutely. The one thing that I admired the most when you first became president was that you were not afraid to tackle challenges head on. And it's so interesting, the climate that we're living in now, someone put it like this, police brutality is just a problem of the process. And if you don't take the time to look at what the process is, then the problem will continue to happen. And when you became president, you really took the initiative to say there are five poverty areas in Pinellas <laughs> County. And if we're talking about being the community's college, mm -hmm. it's important for us to reach those areas that need it the most. If we're talking about closing the wealth gap, we have to be intentional about how we serve those areas that are the most vulnerable. Talk to your vision about those five areas. Man, and you know what, Marilyn, those areas have been poverty areas for decades. They're not new poverty areas. 
and we've not hit the we've not hit the spot right. We we haven't made sure that those individuals are well educated, that they have high wage jobs, um, and that they're able to move about and grow their families. So one of the things I did first was educate the college that these areas existed, and then I shared here are how many students live in those poverty areas. Then we talked about, here's their achievement compared to the overall college. And it was double digit gaps, um, not mm. anything that we're proud of or happy about. And then we even looked at how many employees live in those poverty zip codes, um, because that will help me understand how I need to serve our employees better with the resources that we have. What we found was alarming. Our um, students living in those poverty zip codes are double digits down on the success rates compared to students who do not live in those poverty zip codes. And so um, thank goodness for our faculty and staff who pulled together. Many of those students are African-American, um, breaking it down, African-American males. Mm -hmm. um, and St. Petersburg College Board of Trustees and myself and the college as a whole we're dedicated to improving the success rates of our, of our African-American men. So before the riots, before this happened, we had already made a commitment in December to bring the brother to brother initiative back um, and to improve training on equity and diversity throughout the whole institution to make sure that our employees are respectful and comfortable Right. Um, and value people of color. And then we're looking now at our system. Are there any processes that are roadblocks that, that may be causing our men of color and our other students um, challenges to be successful? The state of Florida, Florida College System is starting an equity committee um, for the state. And I volunteer to be on that committee because it's important for us to look at state um, guidelines and statutes that may be prohibitive for success for our students of color. I, I just think that there are certain things that we need to look at that are uh, less achievable. Not that we could never get it, but the way it's set up, it does not work for students right. who live in those zip codes. And for end of, whether you're black, white, or brown, um, the, there are some challenges there. We also are partnering closer with Pinellas County Schools. They're doing a great job um, with what they have. But we're also looking at how do we um, help them and how do they help us as we receive students who come um, from the college. And then we're looking at how do we hand students off to USF and to other institutions. And when you have schools that have such high GPA requirements for admission, there, you know, there's a high uh, possibility for students of color not to be able to come in. And right. so um, thank goodness for Dr. Tadlock at USF St. Pete. Um, a year ago, we met, we started working on a program called PATH, where individuals um, have a direct line to USF St. Pete, I believe with a 2.5 GPA if they get their AA degree from SPC. So we're responsible for building the pathway for all to access education, right. not building roadblocks, but building the pathway. So those of you who are out there thinking, I'm too old to go to college, or I have a GED, or I can't, you're wrong. You are so wrong. As a matter of fact, if you have your high school diploma or GED, you're accepted. That's it. It's simple. And you don't have to get a degree. We have short-term certificates. We're working on a line worker um, program right now where uh, people will start at about 60,000 a year. Um, it's not a degree program, um, it's a certificate. And so you really need to check SPC out or any community college that you, you're interested in, but, but don't leave out our technical schools. They do have some excellent programs that lead to high wage paying jobs. From where I sit and where I, I've come from, get educated. Just get educated. Um, I would love for you to get educated at SPC, of course. That's right. Um, that's right. Go Titans. Um, <laughs> but, but if you find something that works for you and fits your um, pocketbook, go for it. But I doubt you'll find anything cheaper than us with the you quality won't. that we have. You, you won't. won't. You won't. <laughs> but, um, and I'm in a proud alumni 
of <laughs> St. Petersburg College. And I can attest that institution. I would not be where I am today if it was not for St. Petersburg College. Hands down, hands down from the beginning of my um, education to where I am now in my career. If it was not for people, like you say, standing in the gap, pushing me beyond my comfort zone, I would not be where I am today. So those of you that are looking, you may be unemployed, furloughed, reconsidering, just rediscovering your passion. Go to SPC. Yes, there are people sitting at home. However, we are remote. So there are advisors, career academic people that can help you consider what your future looks like. So there's a word that's going around and you handed to it when you were answering the question, it's equity. Most people are thinking of equality, but there's a difference. Equity is a very specific strategy to help people come together in a new way. Talk about that. You know, I I am so glad that we are finally having these types of um, discussions because people think equity means you get the same, everybody gets the same thing. No, it actually means people get specifically what they need. It's different than what Marilyn needs than what I need. And so you've seen the equity um, graphics. You've seen the three men at the fence and, you know, they're all on boxes and one can see and one cannot. If all of us needed a pair of shoes and someone came and gave each one of us a pair of shoes, all the shoes are size 12. We won't, I I don't wear a 12. So I wouldn't be able to wear that. That's Mm -hmm. equality where everybody gets the same thing. But if we all needed a pair of shoes and I got a size eight and Marilyn got her size and someone else got their size, that's equity where we get what we need. What's challenging about equity is that people will have to get to know who they're working with to understand what their needs are. And even within the same um, demographic, Marilyn and I have two different needs and we look the same. Don't assume just because we're from the same culture that we all have the same (laughs) needs. That's not true. We have different needs. And so in this day and age, we're going to have to learn, one, to value everyone. That's the first thing. Number two, get to know each other to find out what the needs are. Don't assume just because I'm an African-American woman that, you know, I need hair grease. I, don't, I may not want hair grease. I mean, it, don't assume those things. And, and, and I think it's easy to assume, well, you know, even at a college or an educational institution, but well, we have 15 African-American students. African-American students need tutors. No, maybe mm-hmm. only five of them may need tutors and the right. rest don't and not for that subject. And so, um, you know, equity is very intentional. Um, it, is, it is assertive. It is something that you are aiming to do so that you can make sure that those individuals have specifically what they need. And then that's the difference between equity and equality. Um, and, and I think that we need to do a whole lot more with equity. Absolutely. I truly believe that's what it's going to take to bring our communities together. And I feel like even though there is a huge racial divide, it's actually opening up our hearts to have those tough conversations to get down to the root cause of what problems are. Now, as we close our conversation, I want you to talk about you being a woman of faith, a woman of great faith, and you're not ashamed of it. It leads and guides every decision that you make. And I just want you to close out with some encouraging words, especially to leaders that try to keep faith on one end and their professional life on the other end. Well, I'm so glad that um, your show talks about faith and allows for that space. I think that is right. so critical because it never leaves you. It's if, if you're a Christian or you love God, it, it's with, he's with you every day, all day. And so it's not something like, let me take this cloak off and put this one on. It's right. like, where, where does, where do I fit in my faith without offending folks? And so I, I do find times when 
you know, I'll find myself saying, well, I pray about it, you know, or what have you, even at work. And so I, I try to work on that to not offend anyone. But um, my faith is what got me to this point. Those days that I was on my knees, I was asking God for wisdom when, when the doors were shut 50 times. You know, sometimes people don't know, even when I went to get my master's degree, I got rejected four times before USF said yes. How do you continue to move forward through rejection? How do you mm. move forward when things aren't going the way you want them to? For me, you pray and, right. and you ask God for that wisdom and that strength. Um, and, and you don't give up. I'm, I'm not a, I don't quit. I, I just don't have that um, spirit in me to give up on everything and, and to let it go. But we have to be courageous to continue to lean on God. I think that as um, you move up the ladder, you might think you've arrived. You might think you've, you, you ain't done nothing. You just have a job, okay? Right. And, and I have people who come up to me saying, man, I'm glad I don't have your job, especially in these times, you know. And so, and I've had people say, I can't believe why you wanted this job. I mean, it's a hard job, you know, but. I work with some of the most incredible people who are better than I am, smarter than I am, and they're killing the game. I mean, they're out there doing it. And so for me, I am that um, visionist, tone setter. I'm the person who helps the rah-rah. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. And, and we've had some very tough times at the college. I mean, um, you know, the, the funding is totally different for us right now. Enrollment is our major opportunity. Um, and it doesn't always go the way you want. And people have needs. My, my faculty and, and my staff, they have needs. And so for me, I pray over my college. Um, my folks deserve it. They're great people, second to none. Um, and I'm here because of my faith. And because of all the saints out there that pray for me every day. I have so many prayer warriors out there who say, girl, I prayed for you. I saw what happened at the college today. I pray. And so you're just like, thank you. The, right. the other side of that is I do have a family. I have a husband who is the best dude in the world. Um, we celebrate our 30th wedding anniversary on Tuesday. And yes, yes. And he still comes home and I'm so thankful. Um, but we grew up together, and um, he has been a lot of times my sounding board, um, sometimes the one who, you know, pulls me off the cliff when I'm thinking, this is crazy, you know. Um, and he's, he's always just, we need to pray. We need to pray in the morning. We need to pray. Um, and you've got to have those warriors around you, the people who are going to scold you when you need to be scolded. Um, if Derek Williams is watching this, he definitely does not hold back on that part when he thinks that I'm doing it wrong. Um, but who will also cheer you on when you're trying to accomplish something that's tough. That's what God, God is right there in the midst of all of that. And, and your faith is what carries you through that. Um, when everybody's in the room saying, well, how are we gonna do this? And we can't do that. And I'm like, guys, we got this, we can do this because I know who I belong to and Absolutely. what he's done for me. Um, I, I, again, I don't know how people do it. I know that they, they do. I, this is just the way that I believe. Absolutely. Thank you so much for taking your time. You're a very busy woman to so just stop <laughs> by the podcast to drop words of wisdom to those that are watching and to give insight into a very dark world. I appreciate your light. I appreciate the woman of God that you are, your leadership. And it's an honor to be a part of the SBC family and to be under your leadership and to see the vision yes. that you have. So thank you. Well, thank you. And thank you everyone who took the time to spend with us today. And I hope you have a great weekend. Absolutely. Have a great weekend, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye.